Samuel Kapidi. She is a pediatrician and infectious disease specialist at the Asian Hospital and Medical Center. She heads the Department of Microbiology at Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome once again, Dr. Maria Rosario Kapidi. is about new respiratory pathogens. As a young researcher, I worked on ARI and daily 3 decades ago. With these trial times, I will put him in a border and let history just. After just a few seconds ago, I just received an subpoena from India. Just a few seconds ago. Okay, so this was one of our, our first publication for the geology of acute lower respiratory infection in helping children under five years of age. And at that time, the report was ERI is a major cause of morbidity and mortality. There was low sensitivity and specificity of diagnostic tests, and viral pathology studies are uncommon. Fast forward 10 years later, so we have another paper, and uh, we reported that pneumonia remains a leading cause of Death. and newer molecular uh, techniques enabled identification of etiology agents and respiratory viruses are extensively researched. And um, that in the first, during our first uh, work uh, in the etiology studies of pneumonia in the 1990s, we were working with Dr. Zazoki. Uh, he was in, the, in charge of the ARI, un, uh, ARI unit in WHO. And recently, we were working with his son, who was now a um, virologist. So here is the so, so it's really uh, like a family affair. The W estimated the worldwide incidence of respiratory tract infections to be 400 million cases with approximately 4 million um, respiratory tract infection-related deaths, accounting for 7% of all disease-related deaths. That was a report of the WHO in 2011. So we had a quite a number of scientific collaborations at RITM and other local and international institutions uh, uh, primarily with Tohoku University in Japan, USMH, and so I will present uh, some of our data. Uh, just uh, actually, I have presented it in some forum also, and uh, it's an update. So this is a study uh, that was conducted in a regional hospital in Leyte, and. This is about uh, viral path, and uh, we enrolled more than uh, 2,000 children, eight to 13 years, eight months to 13 years of age, those with severe pneumonia. So as you can see, uh, these are the viruses that were isolated. The RSV, the respiratory residual virus, was uh, counted 25%. The rhinovirus, 18%, influenza, 3.7%, and one of the new respiratory pathogens, the beta virus, accounted 3.2%, the far influenza, 2.9%, enterovirus, uh, 1.5%, 
insults, one point four, you had the adenovirus one zero and another new respiratory virus, the coronavirus. So compared to the 1990s and early 2000, where we had uh, difficulty in isolating uh, the viruses. So at this time, so there was really a good number of uh, respiratory viruses, including the new respiratory pathogens. Viral pathogens in severe pneumonia Viral pathogens in severe pneumonia has come into prominence as the role of bacterial infection decreases through early case detection and appropriate antibiotic treatment and introduction of conjugate vaccines. So we start with all the diseases not considered a new respiratory virus, but uh, we know that it's one of the most commonly isolated respiratory uh, the respiratory virus in pneumonia or lower respiratory tract infection. It is an important cause of severe ALRI, a major cause of hospital admissions in young children. 45% of hospital admissions and RSD deaths occur in children younger than six months. And there is a substantial proportion with RSD related deaths with, who had COVID-19. Perinatal immunization strategies for children aged younger than six months will have a substantial impact on RSD-related child mortality. Actually, we, there are a number of studies, clinical trials that is about to start uh, with uh, a clinical trial on RSD in pregnant mothers. And the lack of vaccine and limited antiviral options highlighting the need for novel therapeutic strategies such as drugs that target host factors required for viral medication. So there's really this need. And we move on to the right virus. Uh, that's um, not a new uh, respiratory uh, viral pathogen, but it's one, as you can see, the second most common from those list uh, of viruses isolated from these young children. It is an important viral pathogen in severe pneumonia or one of the main pathogens causing upper respiratory tract infection. So either it can cause a severe one or a mild respiratory infection. And its etiological role is still controversial because it has also been detected in healthy individuals. Okay, we move on to the new respiratory virus. It is identified in 2000, in 2000 to patients with symptoms similar to those infected with RSV, and several patients required hospitalization and mechanical ventilation. Most common presentation in children includes rhinorrhea, cough and fever. Acute hepatitis media also was frequently reported and some with presenting with conjunctivitis, rash, diarrhea, and vomiting are reported, but infrequently. So it's most like paraclinary daily infection. So other cases, uh, some children presented with bronchitis, pneumonia, asthmatic exacerbations, which are most frequent low respiratory tract infection compared to the other respiratory viruses. It is the second most frequently identified virus in respiratory tract infection. But the genesis is strongly affected by bacterial co-infection with pneumococcus, infection with other um, metallonumovirus, it facilitates adhesion of pneumococcus to the mucosal membrane. And studies showed administration of pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is sufficient to reduce the incidence of metallonumovirus. It has a worldwide distribution and affects all age groups. 
but predominantly affects the young, elderly, and immunocompromised patients, such as those with underlying or chronic conditions, such as asthma, congenital heart disease, cancer, and COPD. And infection occurs throughout the year, but seasonal prevalence in colder months and cold incides with the peak of RSV and coincides with peak of RSV infection. So we move on to another uh, new respiratory virus, and this is the coronavirus. So it's a purely or strictly different from the corona SARS virus. In this course, we recognized as animal pathogen in 1980, 1930s, and 30 years later, identified as human pathogens. In 2008, SARS-CoV was identified as a novel virus responsible for the 2002-2003 global outbreaks of SARS, which lasted for nine months, infected 8,000 plus people, and resulted in 774 deaths. This sparked a renewed interest in research, and two years later, uh, the human coronavirus was newly recognized. The incubation period is two to five days, with a median of three days, and most likely to be transmitted during the first few days of illness, when symptoms and respiratory viral loads are at their highest. And associated frequently with common cold, URTI, uh, characterized by rhinorrhea, may some congestion, sore throat, cough that may be associated also with fever. And symptoms in coronavirus are self-limiting and typically peak at day three or four illness. It has been associated with bronchitis, croup, and pneumonia, primarily in infants and immunocompromised children. And this will be associated with acute hepatitis media or asthma exacerbation. So this, I just choose uh, the uh, more common uh, respiratory viruses and then the, the uh, last two uh, new respiratory uh, viruses. And generally, respiratory viruses are, uh, uh, have, they have different behavioral habits environment and degree of immunity are experienced at different ages. And the half-lives of antibodies that recognize different pathogens vary, resulting differences in severity according to age. And studies show 100% of, there's a study that showed that 100% of six-year-old children have been infected with one or more respiratory pathogens, however, Infections do not result in effective long-term immunity, so children can be repeatedly infected by the same viruses. And this uh, was the same slide as the first one, but I want to emphasize the one where uh, there were uh, patients who had two viruses isolated simultaneously. Three viruses, two viruses, in 241 uh, patients, or 5.9%, three viruses in four, uh, four uh, subjects, and four viruses in one. So imagine um, isolating them, it was through actually PCR that were able to isolate them in these uh, uh, patients. And we call that co-infection. So for infection, where you see this either two or three or four viruses uh, at the same time, and this is now actually an area of growing uh, concern for research. So there are a lot of uh, researchers looking into its immunology, its clinical manifestations, and its severity. And um, it's now, as maybe in few months or years, we will have a definite or uh, a definite picture or a clearer picture of cold infection. So overall, cold infection rate uh, was in uh, around 18%. It is higher in one study, higher in the 7 to 14 year old subgroup than in any other age group. And except for RSV, 
all pathogens show higher co-infection rate in rejected patients than in adult patients. And four, there are four pathogens with the highest co-infection rate, which are the coronavirus, the Boca virus, which is also a new respiratory uh, virus, the enterovirus, and the para-influenza virus. So these are the four common uh, respiratory viruses that also may co-infect with other respiratory viruses or also with other uh, bacteria, bacteria. And there is lower co-infection rate concern in RSV, the adenovirus, and the influenza virus. Human rhinovirus, para-influenza, adenovirus, and uh, has been shown also to good effect uh, with streptococcus pneumonia and the cherry pneumonia and the significant involvement in good infections. But the clinical symptoms range from the beautiful to severe. So it are respiratory viruses. Uh, commonly, we collect um, from the nasopharyngeal swabs in viral and we uh, transport that, collect that in a viral transport region, what we call it BTN, and we can store that at 4 degrees centigrade or in the refrigerator until transport either to RITM or to other laboratories. And this is uh, tested by uh, RT-PCR within 10 days after sample uh, collection. And then the gold standard for diagnosis of viral infection is actually virus isolation. However, novel viruses cannot be isolated and demonstrating the presence of the viral genome is only available uh, by detection. So, in spite, just like in, in microbiology, in bacteriology, so still blood culture is still the gold standard, but now we are trying to, first starting actually to, iso to detect uh, streptococcus pneumonia, hemophilus, influenza, pertussis, where now we are seeing a lot of pertussis. Uh, a few months ago, so it's only one or two a month, uh, now we have uh, like 20 uh, pertussis on the theory of for confirmation. There is um, this uh, surveillance uh, by the uh, which is coordinated by the Department of Virology in RATM, so we call it SARA, as Severe Acute Respiratory Infection. You will know that there are uh, six subnational laboratories. Actually, they were established during the, the SARS and then the MERS code. And so these are the subnational laboratories that are capable also of uh, detecting the uh, respiratory pathogen. From the surveillance, you can see that it's the RSV which has the highest number, the respiratory disease and virus, and then followed by the HSV or herpes simplex virus. And again, this respiratory uh, virus, the Mika pneumovirus, and also the other viruses. So we have the influenza, we have the influenza H1N1, the influenza HTN2, influenza. And so adenovirus was uh, isolated in uh, 11%. So we have a good number of different respiratory um, viruses that was uh, isolated or detected from the surveillance, which involved uh, several sentinel hospitals. I'm sure that we're aware that you are aware that there is some news about uh, some pediatric deaths from uh, those from flu infection, and it was reported that the majority of these had uh, H3N2 uh, virus. So, uh, from the last few hours, four to ten, the weekly report. There were 22 influenza associated pediatric deaths reported, which um, I think majority have reached 3 and 2. And so this is 
or the common uh, influence of African tests in order to be seen. And it was the majority of those uh, isolates were which three religions. So we have uh, the one I showed you by little pie uh, was uh, using the PCR, but this one was isolating the virus. And as you can see, I still the HSP1 in terms of 22%, the influenza A, H1, E1, influenza B, and we have quite a number of influenza A, H3, H2, so which was isolated during the period from 2015 until end of uh, 2016, but still, actually still ongoing. So I'll move on to the measles uh, virus. Um, Dr. Josie has presented to us uh, extensively, completely about the, uh, the Regional Verification Commission for Measles Elimination. So we are a number of um, different members from the different countries. And so we, continue, we yearly review those countries that from the report from the National Verification uh, Committee uh, from these 33 actually countries and uh, areas from the uh, smaller uh, islands like Fiji and other, uh, we call it Dr. King, we call it the Fiji and the smaller islands, not countries, which comprise the Western Pacific region. <coughs> So, yeah, so there were uh, 33 countries that we review regularly from their national uh, missiles report. And so this was a summary last year when we had a meeting in Chile. And uh, so far, from those uh, 32 to 33 countries, uh, these are the different categories. So we have verified as having achieved missiles elimination in 20, from 2014 to 2017 in countries. So Australia, Brunei, Cambodia, Hong Kong, Japan, Macau, Republic of Korea, and New Zealand. And actually, you're right, Dr. Kim, um, Foxy Mongolia was initially also uh, verified that it uh, has eliminated the missiles virus. And then the second, so we have verified as having achieved Rubella elimination in 2017. There were two countries, New Zealand and Republic of Korea. And for those countries approaching missile elimination, but with surveillance staff, so they had recommendation and now the People's Democratic Republic, Pacific Islands, and Singapore. And there were countries, one country, who had re-established missile transmission. Uh, they were verified initially as having eliminated missiles, but within three years there was uh, Indian transmission in that country, so uh, there was a re establishment of missile transmission. And six, these are five countries, endemic missile virus transmission, where still there's an ongoing, continuing endemic missile virus transmission. So, China. Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, Vietnam, and actually among those countries, Philippines is the least. So uh, there, is, there was this report that looking into the genotype uh, in the Philippines. Actually, it was a special report. We had this meeting and presented by uh, someone from um, Dr. Ramos. And he traced that between 2000 and 2004, genotype D3 is the endemic genotype in the Philippines, and D3 imports to other countries are traced to the Philippines. And between 2004 and 2005, there was a missiles campaign in the country. There was no missiles detected in 2005. But between 2007 and 2009, genotype D9 and G3 was introduced and detected in our So here, between 2014 and 2015, Genotypes G3 was introduced. 
Jill had to be free and denied for people to circulate and cause so, so we have this uh, internet transmission. Uh, I still don't know uh, what genotype is right now that is uh, being transmitted in the Mises Arctic Union. But I know that uh, we will have the information because uh, the Department of Biology of RBK is the one in charge of it. And this was every time uh, we had this meeting, um, so that was in, I think, in 2014 in one from Geneva. So that was his opening slides. And so uh, the global transmission of nuclear virus from the Philippines, that this was in 2014, but until 2017, it's still the talk, I mean, the issue in the meeting, because we, we received reports from Singapore, from Macau, from Indonesia, from Malaysia, uh, Hong Kong. So they are all the reports, the reported cases are coming from the Philippines, even Vietnam. So, you know, so it's really so, you know, sad that everyone was saying that our imported cases are from the Philippines, but we cannot deny because, because the genotype that was isolated in the import cases was the, the one that we had, the B3 and the B3. So I just hope that uh, we will increase our our uh, missiles or the other EPI vaccine coverage uh, because in you know in that uh, every time uh, there's this meeting and we would uh, those from the WHO and everyone will say we cannot control missiles globally and we cannot control missiles in the Philippines. Okay, so we move on just a few slides about the bacterial pathogen. So I have uh, shown to you that there are a new respiratory viruses that has been isolated from Filipino um, children or presenting what or sick with pneumonia and using the PCR. But uh, in terms of uh, bacterial etiology, there's been no change, no new, like no new respiratory uh, bacterial pathogens or etiology agents for pneumonia. So it's still streptococcus pneumonia, still tenophilus influenzae, and others. And, uh, Although in the 1990s, early 2000s, so there was no nurse, but you have seen um, cases. Actually, this is just uh, uh, part of the, the preliminary report. Uh, so uh, samples are being um, tested in, uh, for PCR rather than the blood culture because uh, I felt like 42% of those children uh, who were uh, admitted had uh, antibiotic use prior to hospitalization. So just an update about the cell type distribution that uh, these are from invasive, these are from invasive uh, samples, so from the blood, from um, CSF, so not from respiratory uh, samples. And we have from this one, now, I, this was from 20, July 2016 until uh, June 2017, so it's just a one year. And this was the different, uh, we had uh, the earlier one from 2005 to 2003, I think to 2005, but, sorry, 2012 to 2015, but this one is from 2016 to 2017. So we were able to have a uh, number of uh, invasive isolates per four that are from uh, 21 from the blood and 13 from the system. Uh, for the population, 19 were projected and other eight, so we don't have the data yet from the uh, CIF regarding the seven regarding the age. So these are the oxygen cell types. And so, we had uh, 23 uh, uh, vaccine serotypes 
and it's about 6 to 8 percent. So as you can see, it's up to the case, so we have the vaccine cell type 3, that just that 2, and then the 6 to 8, 9, and then the 9 to 8 to 1. So these are the vaccine cell types. If you look at the non-vaccine cell types, they're around 23 percent from those individual non-vaccine cell types, but we have this 40 in because there were some isolates are quite like the uh, So uh, that was like 3 or 90%. So it was a So up to around like 32% had the non toxic cell types. And 68% had the percent those with vaccine cell types. I think this is an opportunity also to invite uh, Everyone, uh, you can actually send uh, samples to our HMM from your new local isolates and we can uh, certify that. I think this is really very important so that we continually uh, monitor the existing or the serotype uh, distribution from our children because we are continuing the, the heat, I mean, that's part already. So uh, I just want to mention about the Mirsa that was uh, isolated also among the bacterial pathogens. There is an increased prevalence worldwide as both a healthcare associated and community associated pathogen. And we know that it frequently causes skin and soft tissue infection. However, it is also associated with invasive infections, particularly pneumonia. And the incidence of invasive MRSA pneumonia in children Although we have seen from Dr. Jimmy's um, slide that uh, there's an increase in, but uh, for the invasive MRSA, we look at our computers quite just a few number of um, patients from those in, uh, admitted to RET and it was like uh, 2%, 1.8 to 2%. But for those uh, MRSA from uh, soft tissue and skin infection, so it was around 15%. So, in summary, the rapid advancement of molecular tools in the past 15 years has allowed discovery of new respiratory viruses and led to the discovery of newer uh, respiratory viruses, such as the, uh, the HFPV and the h -Cold and the isolation of viral pathogens demonstrate its potential important role in the etiology of severe pneumonia among children. And the data for the etiology of bacterial agents of low respiratory tract infection still remain low and unreserved, despite having improved diagnostic process. Thank you.